Ecosystems. There was a lot of fishes that at the beginning of the accumulation on the right, and then on the far left, the lighting sequence for this piece is We had to make a compromise and reweld, of course, the tap welds and get underneath it to prime it with a primer while it was only in a slightly lifted manner. Into what they call colloidal suspension, and uh, so it, it wasn't just a matter of throwing a particular pigment into the paint medium that actually had to be manufactured from scratch. And they were great. They were quite excited about the idea. Uh, in those days, epoxy paints, when they first came out, were in five colors. Post office blue, fire engine red, safety yellow, black and white. <laughs> this type of software rather than that one or something, would you? is that something you'd be open to do? To me, that would be a new form, and yes, indeed, I'm open. I'm always open. It's flexible. You know, you have to go like water. Vanessa, you, you mentioned earlier that you didn't at least used to think about conservation when you create your work, but do you ever think of its longevity? I, I love the ephemeral part of it. That's the part that I love about lighting. You know, uh, you want to stay in that moment, but you really, truly, you can't. You can't catch it. You know, of course, is the lighting is inside this structure, this physical sculpture, but you can't really have it for yourself. So you document also the effect that you want to achieve if you describe the work and the, the experience it provides. The challenge here will be in the next 50 years have the equipment, the computer, to be able to read it. That's the key to me. We're conserving the artist's intent and that's the most important thing. I mean if the intent is that the piece falls apart or something that's that's a key thing that we need to know. The ones that before had different hues and the colors were much more intense. So the piece really truly will never be the same. Technology was used in the time of the creation, anchorage the piece in history. And this is our first reference and we can't forget that. And so, I presumably there is not much you can do when that happens? Well, it depends. This is actually a key question that is of um, interest um, to me because um, there are certain things we can do, but the question is, should we? Are we allowed to do this little tweak of technology? Where's the fine dividing line where we move away from the original? So Stories that are being lost, even though they're documented, they're not being experienced in real time by later generations. This entire package of documentation in any ways we can do today by photography, videography, but also in the written word and also the visitor interaction and experience as we are talking about performative works is extremely valuable to serve exactly that. I really want to thank my panelists. Um, I think that you've been wonderful and I was very interested by everything you had to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.